What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie298 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet, and I'm fairly certain that social media has made me a worse person. I, I'm willing to bet that it's made you a worse person as well. Now let me go ahead and say I was never a great person uh, when I finally did discover the internet and discovered social media, whether it was online games or message boards or video boards or something along that lines. I was a cringe lord, and I did a lot of edgy stuff just for the sake of being edgy, so I've never been a great person. But in the last three years especially, I have to say that social media has been polarizing for almost everyone I know, very polarizing for me as well. When I started YouTube, I was a bit of a centrist. I was somebody who didn't really care about other people's politics, who didn't really have a lot of politics of my own. I didn't feel the need to fight any fights or to get out into the streets and be mad at each other. I just felt like coexisting and trying to live the best life I could. Now these days, I'm likely to tweet about politics. I'm likely to post about it on my Facebook. I'm likely to make YouTube videos about it. I mean, this one can kind of be considered political. I used to say that all Americans are just Americans. It doesn't matter how they vote or what they think. They're Americans and I have to treat them like an American. These days, that doesn't seem to be a very popular opinion. And I'm not sure that even I hold it anymore. Facebook is a place where your aunts and your uncles are posting all kinds of uh, hot takes every single day. Twitter is that, but for younger folks, even YouTube can be extremely polarizing now. If you've ever watched a single conspiracy theory video, chances are YouTube has shoved the rest of them down your throat. Watch a single Young Turks video and chances are you're going to get your recommended feed filled with liberal propaganda. Watch one Alex Jones video or one even the quartering video and chances are you're going to get swarmed with a bunch of conservative propaganda. And that makes a lot of sense because YouTube is going to give you what you want to watch. So if you click on a comedy video, you'll probably get a lot more comedy. If you click on a political video, you're going to get a lot more politics. And it's going to keep you watching by giving you more of what you want. And what's more engaging than us versus them, conservatives versus liberals? This gets certain people just feeling like they belong to something. Hank Green made a video about this today, and it's what inspired me to make this video. And in that video, he points out that if you are someone who uses social media, you probably do it because you want to feel important. And whether it's the likes or the views or the money you make, it all comes down to feeling important. Whether you're arguing with somebody or agreeing with somebody or just making a funny joke, Social media is designed to make you feel important when you create for that platform. But even if you don't create for social media, it can still make you feel important because if you're watching somebody that you agree with or disagree with, it can make you feel important because you're part of a group that either agrees with them or disagrees with them. If they're part of that group and they are important, then you are important as well because you have thoughts and feelings on what they're saying and doing. No YouTube creator is immune to this, by the way. We all kind of do it, and I don't think it's innately a bad thing. I'll tell you, for example, if you're watching this video right now, you might consider yourself a fan of mine and a part of the group of people who consider themselves to be fans of mine. You might consider me important because you enjoy what I have to say, enjoy the things that I do, that might make you feel like you're part of something important. Hell, even if you're just somebody who hates on me online, chances are, if you're active in doing that, you do it every single day, you talk about my tweets, you talk about my posts, you're probably doing it because you think on some level I'm important, and hating on me makes you feel like a part of a group that's doing something important, trying to take this stupid idiot in Arkansas down. But when it comes to the dark side of this, well, take for example, the events of January 6th here in the United States and look at all of the Facebook live streams, social media posts from the people who were inside the Capitol building. There were people out there absolutely 100% doing this for the clout, doing it for the views. Do not doubt that. I mean, I'm not gonna name any names or point any fingers here because I don't like to do that here on this channel, especially on a topic like this, but there was at least one YouTuber I know of that was in that building that day filming. And this is what social media has always been leading to. This is what YouTube has always been leading to, or Facebook Live, or Twitch, or any of these other things. People continually doing more outlandish stuff to gain clout, to gain followers, to make money, to get attention, to feel important. It started off with little old me trolling on web forums back in the day in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, it led to prank channels crossing the line here on YouTube. Logan Paul going to that infamous forest. And now this. 
and I think this is as far as we can hopefully go before we finally decide we've had enough. The problem is, as someone here who's not into censorship, I don't necessarily want what's unique and interesting that makes YouTube so cool uh, to go away. I don't want to see this trending tab be the only thing that is on YouTube because there's not a single video on this trending tab that I want to see. Well, maybe Mr. Beast. And that brings me to the point of this video. I have a question for you. I've asked this on Twitter and I want to ask you here. What can we possibly do? Right now we see big tech doing their version of it, which is just censoring a tremendous amount of people some who probably deserve it, but some who probably don't. We see YouTube responding by burying almost anything that is conservative and propping up almost anything that is liberal here on the platform, making a lot of conservatives who are very reasonable people get buried in the process. Not to mention that monetization rules here on YouTube keep getting tighter and tighter, and that list of terms of services keeps getting longer and longer because they want to make sure they're not monetizing anything they wouldn't agree with. In an effort to stop spreading false or fake misinformation, we saw Facebook and Twitter start fact-checking things to try to make sure that whatever you were sharing was accurate, and if it wasn't, uh, giving people a warning. And all of this censoring, all of this fact-checking, all of these bans seem to be making things worse. They're not bringing people together, they're polarizing them even further, chasing them off to forums and message boards and other parts of the internet where there's no one challenging what they have to say and what they have to share at all. No dissenting voices, just an echo chamber. So what's the solution? Because I'm completely at a loss. Uh, Hank Green, who is much smarter than me, offered no solutions. So maybe somebody out there has one. Let me know down in the comments section below. I'll be reading those and maybe we'll do a follow-up video as well. But keep in mind, these types of things tend to get worse before they get better, but it will get better eventually. So fingers crossed. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much and I will speak with you again soon.